Oh boy. Wait for the enemy attack. They're close. Very close. Oh, we're going to start shooting at them at any point. Have decreased. Some of the effects of the measures we took to raise our defenses were temporary. The hell, it's just raining bombs all over us. Having been put to use, like the CAP mission, or worn off over time. Hover over the carrier's defense meter for more information. Wow. Carrier's actually shooting it out. Attention on deck and hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here and welcome to our first look at Aircraft Carrier Survival, the full game. Previously we took a look at Aircraft Carrier Survival in a prologue mode and that you can download free today on Steam if you want to give it a try before you buy. Aircraft Carrier Survival comes out on April 20th, 2022 and offers a campaign a sandbox mode, and some in-depth tutorials for a game which will be very complicated. Obviously, if you're managing a massive aircraft carrier, you're managing hundreds and hundreds of crew members, aircraft, munitions, fuel, and more. And if you're a big fan of games like U-Boat, then Aircraft Carrier Survival is amongst kind of the same realm of that, of managing the crew and such while they're underway, and also missions and taking uh, targets of opportunity and uh, changing plans based on the mission and uh, enemy movements, etc., etc. Now, I believe at the moment we can only play as the United States Navy versus the uh, Imperial Japanese Navy, but it'd be awesome if there's much more than that in the future. If you guys want to see a full playthrough on this one, go ahead and smash that like button. I'd love to show you more of Aircraft Carrier Survival, so go ahead and clap that like button now to show Susan who's boss, and thank you very much for subscribing and turning on the notification bell. We'll be doing a uh, much more uh, live streams on this as well, a more in-depth look, and so if you want to become a member too, Click that join button and join us today. Party boat emotes down below in the comment section from all of our awesome members. Get it done, boys. And glory to Raptoria down below as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have in store for us. We have a tutorial, a campaign, and a sandbox mode. I think we'll jump into sandbox mode first and see what the uh, limitations and restrictions and the abilities and features that it has. We'll also take a look at the campaign today. But first, let's peek at the tutorial to see what it has to teach us about well, aircraft carrier survival. Carrier maneuvers and order, officer orders, uh, deck management and aircraft missions, and defensive maneuvers and damage control. Yeah, I can imagine on a carrier we're going to be taking a lot of damage because, of course, enemy torpedoes, bombs, strafing runs, and just downright uh, 
mechanical failures could probably set us back. Uh, like, for example, an onboard fire, which ain't gonna be a good time. All right, let's go ahead and check out sandbox mode. Oh, man, those loading screens are awesome. I'm definitely gonna leave that in. That's for sure. All right, so we can create an admiral then, so we can change their voice, face appearance. Uh, oh, yeah, you can give them a, <laughs> a hat or a different hair if you want to. Cool. We'll just go ahead and jump through this real quick. Very nice, though, that you can actually have a, a model and a portrait for your admiral, I guess, although that doesn't really match, but you can probably make it somewhat similar if you want to. All good. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and jump into... Uh, oh, man. That, oh, those loading screens are phenomenal. I love that. That's so good. Ah, here we are. So we've got a little bit of a fleet management screen here where we can manage the carrier and perhaps some of its escorts. Yeah, there's escorts up here. So we can manage all of our escort ships. So we can uh, manage the S-Type 2. So we have ourselves a submarine that can come along. Uh, the Saipan Type 2 as well. Looks like it gives us bonuses of defense and munitions and more. We can buy and unlock additional things like the Fletcher or the Independence. And I assume we could also upgrade and modify those ships as well. Wow, look at all the ships here. The Cleveland, the Sims. Dude, there is an incredible... That is way more than I expected. I expected maybe one or two destroyers, one or two supply ships, and that was about it. But I guess this could incorporate every ship that the United States used from before the war, much before the war, all the way up until uh, 45, I assume. And maybe even some late models for some what-if scenarios, maybe. That'd be kind of cool. I wouldn't mind that. We can manage the carrier itself, and it looks like all the crew are on the deck. Very nice. And all the aircraft as well, so we can manage... Uh, oh, there's upgrades as well. So we can give our carrier some upgrades based on what year it is as well. Um, I'm assuming in the campaign, if it's 1942 versus 1944, there's a lot of different equipment uh, in store for us. Damn, look at that carrier too. Looking nice. Oh, and we can chew. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> we have the Lexington... And we can actually uh, take a look at a little bit more of its uh, details. The Yorktown having three elevators. The Essex having uh, the same amount as well. Oh, we have to unlock that, though, by completing upgrades for the previous carrier type. So once we get all the unlocks for the Lexington, we can go on to the Yorktown and the Essex. Oh, that's badass, man, that we can actually do that. Where's the Enterprise? What the hell? I want more. I want it, Well, I guess we can name our carrier whatever we want, too. And so we could name uh, this carrier the... Uh, Enterprise if we wanted to even if it's not or the midway for example. I just want to name them Okay, well we got eight torpedo bombers dive bombers and fighter aircraft and of course we can manage the crew too Wow, look at that. That is incredible. You can work on the veterancy of each of your different uh, Units now are these different like crew types? Uh, there's officers down here. Oh, yeah, here we go. We have us uh, Well, these are just standard officers though. I don't know if it, they have a specialization for certain things what I'm looking for is like, you know, a maintenance crew, pilots, that type of thing. But I don't see anything for that. There must be something like that in here. Wow, an incredible amount of detail, and we haven't even left port yet. Uh, I think I remember this from the previous time, but I don't remember being as blown away as this. To be able to manage the carrier itself, the aircraft, the crew, and then also the escort. And uh, that's pretty sweet. And then as for aircraft, looks like we might be able to increase the number of them, or possibly their munition. We have the Buffalo Vindicator and Devastators. Um... Yeah, I'm assuming we also get different aircraft and munition based on the year, too. There's probably plenty of ways to do that, but uh, we'll see. There could be a lot more in store. All right, let's jump into the campaign and see what's waiting for us. Let's go. Man, look at those loading screens, dude. I love those so much. All right, campaign time then. Uh, the tutorial, I think, also accompanies the campaign, so if before you start the campaign you want to do a tutorial, you can. Otherwise, I think these three might just be separate training to kind of, you know, get you a little bit more familiar with the carrier. The developers, by the way, have told me that they've purposely made this game incredibly difficult, so if you're uh, an expert and you're having a little bit of a tough time, yeah, I guess that's uh, as intended, you know? <laughs> All right, let's go into the campaign. Oh, dude, those loading screens. I'm going to have to leave all of those in. All right, create your Admiral. Good day, Admiral. Please take a few moments to create your avatar. This is how you'll be represented during the campaign. All right, well, I like our look so far. Starting order. Oh, this is important. Just skipping this thinking it's an avatar screen would uh, definitely uh, negate the fact that we get a bonus for doing this. Uh, we have damage control reinforcements, enhanced radar, or defensive positions. 
Wow, in a way, I guess radar is kind of damage control, because if you can detect the enemy before they can cause damage, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a damage control uh, asset there. Uh, add a extra DC team, 50 plus radar range, or two carrier defense and one escort defense. Um, let's see, I think what we'll go ahead and do is go the middle ground, where instead of detecting them from afar or repairing damage after it occurs, we'll stop the damage by shooting at the enemy with our escorts and our carrier. Seems like a good idea to me. Choose your Admiral's characteristics. Yeah, enter the name, select a portrait in which you want to be identified, and try out different faces and voices. That's unnecessary, man. The fact that they put that in is cool. Like, I love when devs put in all these extra details. And the uh, carrier here looks wonderful. Like, it's obviously like an officer's quarters, and that looks phenomenal. Like, again, not necessary. Delighted to see that. Uh, what can we do here? We could actually give ourselves a hat. All right, let's go with something uh, that matches our portrait kind of similarly. Wait a minute. Oh wow, we can give ourselves an eye patch. <laughs> we can be like a pirate captain if we want to. Uh, let's give ourselves some binoculars. Uh, overcoat white. Wow, now we look like a uh, evil scientist or something like that. Oh nice, the uh, navy overcoat. Very nice. Got a cool uh, pea coat there. Uh, let's see, let's go with just what we uh, look like in the... Uh, I guess let's go with what we look like in the avatar. Uh, looks close enough. I'm sure there's something that matches better. And let's go with, uh, oh no, they have shorts? What? Okay, you can goof and meme if you want to. <laughs> the hell? I'll never be caught dead in that stuff. Uh, let's go with the, uh, dress pants. That'll be fine. Can we modify shoes? No. Get the, uh, same old. Alright, that looks close enough, I guess. Let's go on. And, uh, we'll pick a bunch of stuff later. Oh, look at this. You can kind of notice the Air and Navy skills. I wonder if that'll increase our skills as we play more and more between each mission based on how well we do. Oh man, those loading screens are just phenomenal. Well, here we are, boys. Welcome to Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor docks. Welcome to Pearl Harbor, sir. Your strike group will return here after each mission in preparation for the next. In-game currencies. Your current totals of command points and upgrade points are highlighted in the top left corner of the screen. These can be exchanged for various upgrades and additions to your fleet. Get familiar with Pearl Harbor. Please click the highlighted tabs above to familiarize yourself with the different menus. Each one allows you to manage a specific aspect of your strike group. All right. So just like we saw before in Sandbox, this will teach us a little bit more about managing the crew, aircraft, the carrier, and the escort. The crew menu. These men will be the lifeblood of your ship. In the crew menu, you can select and manage your crew or carrier crews and officers in preparation for your next mission. Upgrading crew slots. The number of slots your ship's crew can be upgraded here. Oh, for your ship can be upgraded. Doing so will increase the amount of crew units and officers that you can take on board the carrier. Recruiting and officers. Uh, you can recruit new officers and crew using the highlighted panel. Recruiting a crew unit costs one command point, while the cost for the officers varies. Uh, selecting crew and officers for missions. To select crew units and officers for your next mission, double-click or drag and drop their portraits to move them from the inventory uh, from the inventory below to the available slots above. You can remove units by right-clicking them. Really. Oh, these are all about the same anyway. Okay. So we can take as many as we want, I suppose, since they're free. Oh, okay. So in the future, available personnel will appear here, and then we can just uh, upgrade them or replace them if they are killed or wounded. So when we get back, maybe we'll have additional crew members at our disposal. And I don't think the order matters, so that's that's good. And then officers are here, so we can buy them as well. Uh, let's see, we have a bunch of points. Let's go with the um, more expensive friend here. It looks like they get a bonus card. Defense of adjacent maneuvers plus 150. And also it shows that they have uh, missions completed too. So well, let's go ahead and buy a crew member here. Or an officer, I guess. And I assume we can take out crew and replace with an officer? No. So the officer will just come along without being down here. Cool. Oh, and by purchasing that one, we've now also got a new staff member. So every time we purchase one, 
that's going to be a little strategic. You could buy a cheaper one in exchange for a more expensive one. Um, you know, that'll re-roll the dice, maybe. Or not. Who knows? All right. Oh, our officers are here on the right side. Okay. Uh, let's see. Wow, the card must have something to do with uh, some sort of... Some sort of a combat uh, system within the game. Maybe on the on the main map. So you have your officers here, crew at the bottom, cool. And then we can switch out officers as needed, nice. Alright, the aircraft menu. The air aircraft here at Pearl Harbor are among the best our military has at its disposal. Using the aircraft menu, you can prepare the planes that will be sent into battle during your upcoming mission. Upgrading squadron types. Under the Unlock tab, you can upgrade your aircraft models to improve their performance in combat. Whether you upgrade a particular category, all aircraft of that type will be upgraded. Obtaining additional planes. Command points can be exchanged for squadrons and vice versa. Under the Buy tab, use the on-screen plus and minus buttons to add and remove squadrons respectively. Selecting aircraft for missions. All squadrons currently on board your carrier are shown here on the deck. You can change the appearance of each aircraft type using the radio buttons beneath them. Oh, really? So these radio buttons, we can use the... Uh... Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they actually do change. You can barely tell, but that's actually pretty sweet. Wow, okay. It's actually very cool. Alright, let's go to the carrier. The carrier menu. Here she is, Admiral. The aircraft carrier under your command. This is the carrier menu, where you can obtain upgrades for various aspects of your flagship. Upgrading carrier statistics. Available upgrades are shown in the panel to the left. Some of them will influence your strike group's overall statistics. Changing the carrier's name. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. And you can also rename the carrier here. Oh, yeah, I see. Awesome. Ah, uh, that's what I wanted to see, the carrier type. At this time, you have access to only one type of aircraft carrier. As the ca Oh, yeah, we can actually continue through the campaign while upgrading the carrier. So it's more about managing our crew and our officers, and then we can bring them to a new carrier. So it's not like we have to, you know, start a different campaign or something like that. That's cool. There's a little bit of a progression with that. I like that. At this time, you have access to only one aircraft carrier, and um, you'll unlock more and be able to tailor your fleet to your own specifications. That is awesome. All right, so yeah, again, the Lexington, Yorktown, and Essex are available, and then we can rename the Saratoga to the uh, Midway if we want to, or the Ronald Reagan. It, it doesn't matter. Nothing can stop us. All right, let's move on to Escort. The Escort menu. As every mission is different, you can come here to adjust your fleet accordingly. Use the Escort menu to set up your carrier's escort, preparing a strike group that will serve you well at sea. Escort ship's influence on statistics. Your escort affects your strike group's overall statistics as shown in the escort bonuses panel, increasing the amount of escort ships. You can use the highlighted panel to upgrade uh, the size of your escort, allowing you to add more vessels to your strike group. Each ship provides a different bonus, so you can use your judgment and adapt the escort to your needs. Well, I, need, I need me some uh, Wendy's, so I hope this thing's not too big for the drive through Unlocking and acquiring escort ships. Some escort ships are available from the start of the campaign. You can spend upgrade points to unlock new types of ships, after which you can obtain vessels of unlocked types for a certain number of command points. Interesting. I wonder what will be more important, officers and crew or ships overall? I wonder what will have the biggest benefit at the start. That's very interesting. Selecting escort ships for missions. To choose your escort for a mission, double click and drag to drop the ship's icon. From the inventory to available slots in the dock, you can remove ships from the escort by right-clicking them in the dock. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could remove this um, or replace it. Okay, so we can actually go with more, um, yeah, more escort ships or more supply or whatnot. So some replenish, some give free uh, cap. Other one is uh, oh, actually works on enemy uh, enemy vessels as well. All right, well, let's replace what we had there. The supply ship seems like a good idea. All around, we've got ourselves uh, free CAP, cargo sinking, and uh, replenishing squadrons. So that's good. Excellent. Um, well, yeah, since I don't really know what we want to buy or upgrade, I suppose this is fine for now. We can also unlock additional... 
Uh, let's see. Actually, we have... Oh, you know what would be nice is getting a Fletcher, which would give us Torpedo Defense. Some of these might be a little expensive, though. We have Oilers there. The Atlanta. Nice. Squadron of Light Cruisers. Escort Defense plus two. Carrier Defense plus one. Wow. Oh, let's just bring along. Why the, why the hell not? Let's just go ahead and unlock that. And then we have to buy it, too. So there's a little bit more of an expense than we... We thought, ah, damn, it's 12. <laughs> a little more expensive than what we can afford, but we can always come back and buy it after we complete missions and get more points. That's cool, though. Oh, and we also have a single on there, too. Very nice. Cool. All right, let's launch. Launching out on a mission. Clicking the launch button brings you here to the mission select menu. Selecting a mission. You can undertake any mission shown on the map, each of which is represented by a dot. Click these dots for more information. A description of the mission is background is shown at the top left panel. Beneath is a description of the main objectives. You can earn medals in recognition by achieving certain goals during each mission. The requirements for each of these honors are listed here. You will be awarded uh, the command points and upgrade points for completing each mission in the amount shown at the bottom left corner of the screen. To begin a mission, uh, click on depart. Okay, so we've only got one at our uh, current uh, point, but yeah, you can see here we started Pearl Harbor, so it looks like we're heading towards Wake Island. Uh oh, we're gonna go rescue um, enemy. Oh, we're gonna destroy the enemy carrier to stop its attack on Wake Island. Wow, all right, we got a carrier battle to start with. Well, let's get cracking, boys. So it appears the tutorial for the campaign gives you an introduction to Pearl Harbor and the basics of upgrading your fleet and managing it, but now it's time to learn more important things about the carrier management and what we'll be doing. Well, the, the main thing of the game, the thing we all want to see is actual carrier combat and moving our fleet around and engaging the enemy. So let's go ahead and start with maneuvers. I love every one of those load screens. I cannot stress this enough. I cannot stress that enough. That is beautiful. Look at that. Wow. Good day, Admiral. I'm here to run you through the basics of the interface you will be using to control the carrier. Let's begin with controlling the camera. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. To rotate the view around the carrier, move the mouse while perfect. Next, I'll cover moving the vessel. We begin by setting a waypoint. Please click the tactical map icon. This is the tactical map menu. You can see our carrier's current position, represented by the highlighted marker. To direct our course, you must begin by clicking this marker. Next, click your intended destination on the map. Vantage point one, our current goal, is highlighted here. Perfect, our course is set. Click the exit button to close the tactical map menu. Okay. To get moving, we must now start the engines. Click the carrier speed icon, then click the desired speed to begin moving our fleet. Please select slow. Higher speeds are unavailable for now. We're moving. For the time being, we must wait for our strike group to reach its destination. You can control the speed of the ongoing action using the speed controls in the bottom right corner of the screen. Nice. Very cool looking. Whoa. Excellent. We have reached our first destination. Traveling the seas depletes our resources. When we are out of supplies, the carrier can still continue moving but we cannot deploy any aircraft. We will discuss the finer points of variables relating to supply use later. To resupply the carrier, you must give the order. To get started, open the order menu by clicking the icon below. Next, please click the resupply ship icon to begin preparing the order. Okay. Resupply ship, stop carrier to begin resupply. You must now assign officers to the order. Officer's expertise in one of two fields, Navy or Air, ah. is measured by numerical scores shown beside their portraits. To execute an order, the assigned officer's collective scores must meet the requirements shown on that order's icon. Of course, you have expertise in both fields, Admiral. Click your portrait to assign yourself to the resupply ship order. Interesting. You can now confirm the order by clicking the highlighted icon. This will initiate the resupply process. Now we must wait for the resupply procedure to reach completion. Let me remind you, Admiral, that you can use the time speed controls to speed up the action while we wait. Um, I want to be able to actually see this in action. Oh, the ship is actually coming over. That's badass. Very nice. 
Oh, that's cool. It's like getting a pizza delivered. All right. Let's see if some of the uh, lines and stuff are actually cast. Oh, yeah, they did. Wow, they did it, dude. Oh, and look at that. Supplies are coming over. That's amazing, man. That's <laughs> so cool. Yeah, they're running supplies from uh, the supply ship over to the carrier via the supply lines. That's amazing. Wow, that is such a dumb detail. <laughs> and I love it, dude. That's really cool. We have received information about an unidentified object some distance from here. Uh oh. I recommend that we carry out a reconnaissance mission. Click the island or press 3 on your keyboard to begin the preparations. An abyss view shows the island where you and your officers coordinate the ship's operations. Oh, wow. Each room provides a facility called a switch for carrying out three functions. Each room switch can only be set to enable one function at a time. Set the switch in the meteorology room to add one times recon mission. Click the Combat Information Center, CIC, to send an officer there. In this case, yourself, Admiral. An officer will be temporarily unavailable while moving between rooms. When you reach CIC, set the room switch to add one times identify target's mission. The function enabled by the switch in the meteorology room will remain active even when there is no officer in the room. This is an incredible simulator. This is, this, we're getting into a real detailed simulator level rather than it just being like a fun arcade right click shoot thing. Wow, that's impressive. So we need to add a... There we go. Identify target mission. Now we can find out more about the information we received by opening the tactical map menu. We actually have to walk as the Admiral to, <laughs> to each uh, station to give orders as well. Here you can see the location of the unknown object represented by a marker. Let's return to the carrier and prepare a mission to find out more about it. Next, we must enter the deck view. Click the deck of the carrier using your mouse or press 1 on your keyboard. Here you can prepare the aircraft for dispatching on missions. Click the plus icon and select dive bombers to position a squadron on the deck. You'll then see the planes being hauled onto the deck. Click the plus icon and position a second squadron of dive bombers, sir. Um, I did. Uh oh. I guess we gotta wait until they're loaded onto the, uh, onto the deck. There they go. Alright, so the first squadron is in place. Second squadron coming up now, up the elevator. The missions currently available for execution are shown in the available section of the missions panel below. Hover over the highlighted recon icon and click the prepare button. Then, click your chosen target of the recon mission and click a place on the map to set it as the recovery area. The place where you will pick up our returning planes. In this case, I suggest selecting our vessel's current location, sir. Click confirm to complete the plan. Wow. I don't want to go there. Uh oh. Alright, let's close the map then. We are ready to launch the mission. Hover over the highlighted recon icon in the ready section of the missions panel and click the launch icon. The airmen will depart shortly. Start engine! Oh, here we go. Oh, nice. You can actually see the crew members uh, pushing things into position. Awesome. Love how the carrier name is at the uh, very front, too. All right, there go the dive bombers. Begun. You can 
observe its progress by opening the tactical map view star. To track the progress of a particular mission, hover the mouse cursor over the relevant icon in the missions panel below. Now we must wait for their mission report. As always, Admiral, you can speed up the passage of time by using the time speed controls. Okay. So we sent them out to the mission and then... The reconnaissance mission report has been received, sir. It was merely a group of whales. Oh my god. No adversaries were found. Wait, what? Let's now prepare the deck for the recovery of our returning aircraft. Please click confirm to close the report and then close the tactical map. You're telling me it was a bunch of mobile mobile game users? C come on. All right, let's recover. The deck management icon above. As you can see, the deck is currently in the launching state. Click the recovery icon on the left of the panel to prepare the carrier for receiving our incoming aircraft. When aircraft returning from a mission are ready to land, the mission's icon will appear in the recovery section of the panel below. Hover over the highlighted icon to open the panel and then click the recover button. Okay, so hover over the highlighted icon and open the panel then click recover. Well, I did do that already. And now we just gotta recover the incoming aircraft, okay. So where are they? Can't see. All right, so we, I guess we just gotta wait. Well, that gets choppy on those high frames, on those high seas. Okay, they're almost here. Uh, they should be landing. Stand by to recover aircraft. Ah, we have to indicate that we want to recover. Okay. There they go. Successful landings. Excellent. Everybody's back. Good job, boys. Kind of weird how we have to, like, actually click recover. I guess that gives them final approval to actually land. So a little bit of the carrier deck game, if you've seen that before, where you're launching um, ground attack missions, recon, and uh, was completed air superiority. Sir. Click the deck management icon again, and set the deck state back to launching to prepare for further missions. Deck wow. So you gotta give orders for everything. Launching, recovery, landing approvals, Interesting. All right, so now we just got to wait for them to go back down into the elevator. Or they'll sit at the back of the deck, I suppose, since we haven't deselected those planes. But we could put them in the elevator if we wanted to. We have received information regarding another potential target. Admiral, I'll run through the reconnaissance process again. Hover over the recon mission icon below. Click the prepare button. Then set the mission's target and recovery area in the tactical map view. Followed by clicking confirm. Use the missions panel below to launch the mission. Later, set the deck state to recovery and recover the aircraft as before. Okay. Yep, we're set to launching. So we did indicate for this. Uh, they should be ready to go now. So we have two squads of dive bombers ready to go. Oh, wait. Let's confirm the mission. And launch. Stand by to start engine. And then once they leave, we can set things to recovery. Man, that's so cool. Look at them go.
Did that guy sneeze? That was a big sneeze. Alright, set to recovery. And we'll have to see if the enemy's on their way. I want to be able to see the tactical map, but they won't let me. I want to see what's there. <laughs> Uh-oh. We've spotted some Japanese ships. Uh-oh. All right, so we need to recover them. We can't attack them even though we sent out three dive bombers. Actually, six. All right, we'll wait for them to come back then. Speed things up. Here they come. Nice job. All right, three more. I don't even think we can see them on the radar approaching. I assume this is the carrier here. Maybe this is uh, on the minimap. The approval for them to approach. All right. All aircraft recovered. Our airmen discovered enemy vessels nearby. We need to determine the fleet's strength and makeup before engaging it in combat. Oh my god. First, open the deck management menu and change the state back to launching. An identified target's mission can then be prepared and launched in much the same way as a recon mission. Clear the flight deck and prepare for takeoff. Alright, so now we have to identify. So we recon, identify, and then we're going to order an airstrike. So now identify targets. Uh oh, they're kind of heading towards us. There we go. Um. All right, so we've spotted an enemy destroyer and some submarines. Great. Let's set back to recovery. Wait. Oh, only one squadron went out. All right, recovery. Respot the deck. Prepare for recovery. Yep. Move those planes to the front end. Let those other aircraft return. Enemy fleet, sir. Now we know what we're up against. Enter the island view to begin preparations for combat. Time for some combat. Click the meteorology room, Admiral. There, you can set the switch to add one times airstrike mission. Time to work. Now, you can use the deck management panel to set the deck to its launching state, sir. Respot the deck. Prepare for launching. Alright, there they go. Good. All according to plan. When there are no crew units assigned to the air department, we can only manage three squadrons on the deck, which is insufficient for an attack, of course. Let's open the crew management menu to allocate the staff we need. As we require five squadrons for the airstrike, we need to assign two crew units to the air department. Begin by dragging and dropping the first unit to a slot in the air department section. The unit is on its way, sir. Now you can assign another. All right, they're both on their way. We have the personnel we need for our strike. Let's return to the ship. Prepare an airstrike mission using the panel below, sir. Once you have selected our target, we can prepare our attack strategy. 
We're attacking the Japanese in 1940? Okay. This is the menu for preparing our attack strategy, Admiral. Damn. The strategy comprises a set of five maneuvers, each represented by a car. There are three different types of maneuver. Offensive, red. Defensive, blue. And supportive, green. You can switch between these categories by clicking the tabs to the left of the cards. For this assault, sir, I recommend that we place the offensive maneuver and will attack in slot number one. Slot number five would be an ideal place for a defensive maneuver, Jinky. As we require more defense, I suggest allocating supportive maneuver strike from the sun to slot number two. There we go. Proof of my recommendations, Admiral. Please click the confirm button. As always, we need to specify the recovery area where our airmen will wait for pickup. For the purposes of this mission, I suggest clicking the current location of our fleet. Now click confirm, sir. Next, we need to return to the deck and prepare our squadrons for the mission. We already have the necessary dive bombers on deck. In addition, we need three more squadrons for this engagement. One of fighter aircraft and two of torpedo bombers. Once they are ready, the mission can be launched. Okay, so we need three more squadrons, all right. So we got to switch these out to have torpedo bombers. Issue a torpedo bomber squadron on the deck. There we go. So we're going to do dive bombers, torpedo bombers, and fighters. Wow, this Issue is looking cool. All right, here they come. Aircraft are lining up. Issue a fighter squadron on the deck. Oh, we should be ready to launch. Start engines. And we are set to launch, right? Oh, wow. Nobody's starting their engine. Let's go. All right, they're taking off. Well, boys, it looks like we got them. Destroyer and submarines destroyed. We lost a dive bomber, fighter, and two torpedo bombers. Yeah, let's get them, boys. Got him. All right, good. Now we're ready to recover. Time to do some defensive maneuvers. Let's get her done, boys. I I still love every art piece in this game. It's phenomenal. Admiral, we have received word of an imminent enemy airstrike. We need to boost our defenses. The carrier's defenses are measured in defense points, shown on a meter in the top left corner of the screen. Cover your cursor over the defense. Our strike group's escort ships share a separate defense value shown on the highlighted escort icon. Hover over this icon to continue. To increase these values, we need to assign crew to a specific department. Please open the crew management menu to get started. We can increase both our defense values by assigning personnel to the anti-aircraft department. One point per crew unit. Drag and drop a crew unit there now. The number of available slots in the department 
can be upgraded later, sir. All right, they got to walk there again as usual. Okay. I wish it would tell you how long that it would take them to walk from where they were to where their uh, station was or their post or whatever. We can now exit this menu, sir. Ordering our ship's escort to assume a defensive formation will also increase both of our defense values. This can be achieved by launching a defensive position order. Select this order from the order's list, assign yourself to the task admiral, and then confirm the order. In the island view, we can send an officer to the combat information center to set the switch to add one times CAP mission, enabling a combat air patrol mission. Ready, sir. Roger that. You must now enter the deck view, Admiral. Position two squadrons of fighter aircraft on the deck to prepare the CAP mission. Remember that you can see the planes required for a mission by hovering over its icon below, sir. Launch the mission, and you'll see both our carriers and escorts' defense values increase by two points. Issue a fighter squadron on the deck. So we want two squadrons. There they go. Defend the carrier, boys. Okay, they should be ready for launch then. Stand by to start engine. All right, they should be on their way. I love how you can see just all the different crew members here going to each individual aircraft to start it up and whatnot. It would be also cool if you could see the pilots um, inside the aircraft. I don't see them or getting into the aircraft or whatnot. I mean, they could be in there when they go up the elevator or whatnot, but I mean, you don't. You don't really see anybody in there, so... Oop. Uh, I don't want to... Uh-oh. Is that going to throw him overboard? There we go. Alright, you three are up next. Let's go. Next, sir. I recommend another defensive action that can be executed from the island. The switch we want to set is in the pilot briefing room, Admiral. Move your available officer there. On my way! In this room, you can set the switch to add plus one carrier defense to give our carrier's defense value another boost. We are almost ready, sir. We can also use the active ability of one of our escort ships to get our defenses to the requisite level. Damn. To do this, we begin by opening the escort panel. Click the heavy cruiser's play button. Two options will oh. appear for this ship's active ability. One to raise our carrier's defense, the other to raise our escort's defense. Each of these options raises one of two defense values. Other ship's abilities will raise both. For now, click the carrier defense button. That is awesome. I've always wanted to use the Atlanta. Now we finally get to. I tried to use it before. It's our time, boys. All right, so we want to click Carrier Defense. Excellent, Admiral. We are now in a much better position to defend against enemy attacks. You can click the incoming enemy button above the radar to see the approaching forces. Observe the value of the enemy's attack strength in comparison to our carrier's defense. We must now wait to see how the battle unfolds. Oh, baby. There they come. Wow, that's a lot of aircraft. So that's eight squadrons of Japanese fighter bombers, torpedo bombers, maybe. Oh, boy. Wait for the enemy attack. They're close.
Very close. Oh, we're going to start shooting at him at any point. There's the ships. Well, the enemy attack is here. And there's the carrier. Thank God the Atlantis are here. Attack strength eight, click to view. Well, I could hear him. Sir, we successfully repelled the attack. However, our defense values have decreased. Some of the effects of the measures we took to raise our defenses were temporary. The hell, it's just raining bombs all over us. Having been put to use, like the CAP mission, or worn off over time, hover over the carrier's defense meter for more information. Wow. Carrier's actually shooting it out. That's awesome, dude. And there's the sections of the carrier itself, too. We can see the hangar section, engine rooms. Wow. Enemy aircraft over overhead. That's so cool. Hover over the crew management oh. menu. You will see that the anti-aircraft crew is currently busy maintaining the cannons, so they won't be available for other tasks for some time. To repair the ship faster, we need to assign as many men to damage control (DC) as we can, sir. The more units we have in that department, the greater each DC's team efficiency will be. Enter the crew management menu and assign three units to the damage control department. As always, we must wait for the units to take their positions in DC. Once we have enough personnel assigned to DC, we'll have an effective workforce ready to deal with damage and malfunctions. Once they are in position, close the menu to return to the deck, Admiral. We can form one damage control team from the island. To do so, you must first move an officer to the highlighted navigation room. Damage control. Roger that. So add one DC team, or maybe boost and gain direct control? From here, you can enable add one times DC team, which adds an additional damage control team. With our DC teams in place, repairs can begin. Enter the section's view to watch DC deal with the damage below deck. There's been a malfunction in the engine section, Admiral. To assign the DC teams to repair this, click one of their portraits in the damage control panel and select malfunction repair. Represented by a cogwheel icon. Excellent. Now we need to wait for the malfunction to be fixed. Wait for DC to finish repairs. Okay. Nice. Very nice indeed. Repel a little bit of damage. Oh, great. And now we have a fire in the hangar. Oh, boy. You can see the, the boys in there working. Quickly, boys. Water has breached the helm section, Admiral. What? To pump out the water, a DC team must be assigned to deep flooding duties. Represented by the droplet icon, teams to pump it out. Our men in DC are dealing with this, sir. We just need to wait for them to finish pumping out the water. Wow. Damage control team in fire, repair, and flooding. We took a little bit of damage there. Look at how cool that looks. It's awesome. As well as assigning tasks to DC teams, you can also take direct control over their actions. To enable this function, we must return to the island. There is already an officer in the navigation room. In there, you can set the switch to the function label, boost and gain direct control of DC teams. Some of our crew have been injured, sir. 
click the highlighted event icon to move the camera to where this event is taking place. If more than one event is occurring, you can click on the event icon repeatedly to cycle through the different event locations. Wow. While injured crew will receive first aid from DC teams assigned to medical duties in the damage control panel, you can also tend to them quickly by sending the DC team directly to the segment marked with the cross icon. Select the DC team from the panel and then click the segment where they are needed. We must not delay, sir. Ready. Aye, aye. Go. Well, they got to go up over the deck, back down into the hangar, and then through to where the pilots are. We were able to save our injured shipmates, sir. Had we not reached them in time, they would still be alive, but in mortal danger. The unit's portrait in the crew management menu would then be marked with a red background and the time remaining until their deaths. Open the crew management menu and I will show you how to help our crew in such circumstances. To make the medical department operational, you need to move an available crew unit there. Oh yeah, we gotta wait again. This game has quite a bit of polish and quite a bit of promise. I want to see Aircraft Carrier Survival get some missions from users in the Steam Workshop, but I like what I see so far, a ton of detail in the tutorials, which can make a otherwise complicated task rather simple with just a little bit of training. Though we mostly went through tutorials here today, every battle will gain us experience and gain us points to unlock more ships in the future at Pearl Harbor, all the way up to the Essex and such, and the ability to get more XP for crew members and to have a diligent and elite crew to fight the enemy. That is it for today's episode, everybody, of Aircraft Carrier Survival. Thanks again for subscribing. If you're new here, don't be afraid to say hi down below in the comments section. And I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend or a week or just a phenomenal day. Thanks again for joining. For more videos on Aircraft Carrier Survival, don't forget to sub. Thanks for smashing the like to support the channel. And thank you very much for becoming members. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for coming aboard. We'll see you soon. Goodbye.